January, 1776. Dearest Mother, I can't escape the fear of all-out war between the colonies and England. The colonists believe their fighting for their rights as British subjects. But some feel the only way they can get those rights is to break away from England. Sarah, you seem troubled. I'm worried, Dr. Franklin. About what? War. I fear this rebellion may get out of hand and lead to something awful. What could be more awful than the situation we're in now? Our rights trampled by a parliament half a world away. I wish someone would give me ten minutes alone with that King George. That's no way to talk about his majesty. He's our king. He's not my king. I'm French. The whims of royalty have laid the world to ashes. King George is a worthless, brutal man. The crowned savage of Great Britain. Your servant, miss. Why, bless me, Tom. You know this individual? Don't judge a book by its cover, Sarah. James, Henri, Sarah, I'd like you to meet my old protege, Thomas Paine. Editor of the Pennsylvania Magazine? If it wasn't for Dr. Franklin's letter of introduction, I'd be rotting in the gutters of London. You're looking thin, old friend. How long has it been? Two years? Come dine with us and share your adventures. A dirty, ragged man who publicly slanders the king. And here we are, breaking bread with him. The challenge is the elevation of the common man. I wish he'd start by elevating common table manners. Mr. Payne, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Your essays against slavery have been an inspiration. Thank you, good fellow. I'm opposed to all forms of tyranny. You see, our current struggle is not really with England. I'm happy to hear you say that. It's against all privilege. It's against any system where some have unfair advantage over others. <gasps> I agree. Aristocrats are all wet. Tom, your passion is stirring, but why aren't you still writing? I've read not a word by you in months. My good doctor, I've done nothing but write. Ah. I've been struggling to define this revolution of ours, to explain it in a way that will make it clear to every man, woman, and child. At Benjamin Rush's suggestion, I've called it common sense. It should be on the streets any day now. May I? And what conclusions have you reached? I make the case for total independence from the crown. Independence? You would cut ties to the king himself? The sooner, the better. Tom, while well, I agree with you, I'm not sure the people are ready for such a radical solution. The majority are still loyal to the king. Their beef is with parliament. Ben, the whole idea of a tiny island like England imposing rule over a giant land like this is absurd. But that's how it's always been and people once thought the world was flat. It is my hope common sense will change public opinion. Tom, in my youth, I was hot-headed, but have since learned the virtue of patience. With all due respect, Doctor, tell the widows and orphans of Boston about the virtues of patience. I have no patience for patience. Thank you for the meal. Good evening. That man has some temper. And some pin. Europe and not England is the parent country of America. This new world hath been the asylum for the persecuted lovers of civil and religious liberty from every part of Europe. Hither have they fled, not from the tender embraces of the mother, but from the cruelty of the monster. This is fantastic. I'll never read that man's pamphlet. It's dangerous. He wants to start a war that will take years to end. Sarah, Tom is simply putting into words what is already in the hearts of many. He's a good man. However, I concede his temper is a problem. I'll see that he stays out of trouble. I'm coming with you. But you don't even like the man. I don't. But if Mr. Payne's common sense is going to appear in print, the Gazette should have it. I thought you weren't going to read it. I'm not. But we are a newspaper, and common sense is news. Hey, wait for me! Moses, we'd better get the press ready. I have a feeling we're going to need extra copies of Common Sense once word gets out. Where could Payne have gone? Ooh, 
I hope home to bed, which is where I wish I were. Either you're all cowards or you're all fools. He must talk in his sleep. Come on. Away with you. You're blowing smoke. This is crazy talk. America's not our country. We're Pennsylvania men. This is our country. You've got a narrow mind for someone with such broad shoulders. Why should we fight to defend hot-headed foreigners from Massachusetts? Because unless we fight for each other, we'll all end up slaves to a British master. The man makes sense. How does he figure that? He, he's not making sense. Why do you hesitate? Has the stink of fish turned your heads to pudding? Who are you calling a pudding here? Time to shut his mouth good. All it. right, then. Come on. I'm not afraid of the lot of you. Nice shot, James. Get him. There he goes. Nice here. I'll show him to a fight, huh? Come on. This way. What's this? Common sense? 1,000 copies. I hope that's going to be enough. It's half past eight. You'd better open the shop. <sighs> early to bed, early to rise. One out of two isn't bad. Ah! Quickly, I must have one before you run out too. Run out of what? Common sense, of course. Where else am I to find a copy? Wake up, lad. Bradford's is out. So is Hammersby. Ben Franklin's. This way. Maybe they are <gasps> copies. Hey, what are they doing? They closed the door. I thought they had it. They're supposed to be open. What's going on? Ah. Moses, better make that 2,000 copies. If this keeps up, Common Sense will be the best-selling pamphlet in the colonies. It's dangerous propaganda, and we've helped spread it. That's not true. You haven't even read it yourself. How do you know it's dangerous? I know treason when I hear it. Well, if you aren't interested in this story, you don't have to come along. What I'm interested in is making sure we get both sides of the story. Not everyone is going to agree with Mr. Payne's ravings. If we're going to gauge the public's response, we need to get the complete picture. That's good journalism. I'll interview that gentleman over there. And you can interview that one. Come along, Henri. I don't want you wandering off. No, thanks. I think I'll have a lot more fun without you two. Common sense. More like nonsense. We're all Englishmen. I didn't hear these rebels complaining about the king when he sent his best men here during the French and Indian War. So, in your opinion, Common sense fails to address. It's rubbish, and I'd feel the same way even if I had read it. Hmm. To me, common sense makes sense. It's like these threads. Alone, they are weak, but together, together, they are strong, unbreakable. Each thread adding its own weight to make the whole strong. That is how we must weave this new land. Knowing for the first time in human history, we are all of equal value. A friend of yours? Sometimes. Well, what did he say? The tailor thinks Payne is right. Well, I spoke to a merchant, and he thinks Mr. Payne is wrong. That's because you only interview rich Tories. I most certainly do not. We'll stop the next man we see and interview him together. Good day, sir. My fellow journalist and I seek your opinion. We'd like to know what you think of common sense. I'm for it. You've read it? Hasn't everyone? Uh. Oh. Huh? I've hit the jackpot! We'd very much appreciate your views on common sense. I'm proud to say I'm a successful man by virtue of my own labor. The men who work for me are paid a fair wage. We share mutual respect. But when I travel to England on business, the rich avoid the eyes of the poor. The poor do likewise, fearing the wrath of the wealthy. Whether my sons fare well or poorly in life, 
Do not have them fear another man's gaze. That's my opinion, and that's common sense. And that's one more vote for independence. Henri knows the streets better than we do. Why do we have to find him? Because Moses will need help printing more copies of Common Sense. Henri has a way of vanishing when there's work to be done. Don't you ever worry about what all this will lead to? Of course not. If I can't find Henri, it will lead to a lot more work for me. You're not talking about Henri, are you? No. I mean this rebellion. This Tom Paine character telling people the king is a tyrant. If enough people believe him, the whole world could be turned upside down. Sarah, don't be afraid. Be encouraged. As Tom says, we have a chance to begin the world anew. I can't think of anything more exciting. All right. Why don't you search the dogs for Henri, and I'll head home to get supper ready. James, sometimes you're not as terrible as you are at other times. Henri? Henri, James has been looking all over for you. You shouldn't be in this disreputable place where people are... reading common sense? I found a critful. If you don't mind a little mud, they're not bad. Publish yourselves them for one shilling. I'm getting two. I'll give you three to get home. One, two... Hey, I've got customers here! Of more worth is one honest man than all the crown ruffians that ever lived. Here's another. We break not from the tender embrace of the mother, but from the cruelty of the monster. Don't say such things. If you call the king our enemy, he'll become our enemy. It will cause years of bloody fighting, and Great Britain will win! Pay her no mind. She's just a girl. A girl, maybe, but no lady making herself a spectacle. Quite right. <gasps> You were saying something about leaving? Don't worry about that rabble, lass. I'm taking this filthy pamphlet to the proper authorities. They'll know what to do with the author, whoever he is. The coward didn't even have the courage to put his name on it. <gasps> you were saying something about Great Britain winning? English girl? I don't want the English in here. Let's show her the door. She's not welcome here. Let's get her out of here. You really know how to make friends. No, stop! Free copies, free! Here! Out of the way. <gasps> we serve no cause if we're as intolerant as our old masters. Tom Payne! Your servant, miss. Who's Tom Payne? If you had any common sense, you'd know who Thomas Payne is. Are you hurt? No, thank you. I have a temper and sometimes forget the virtue of humility. Humility is an overrated virtue. It's better than arrogance. No, Sarah, it's not. I was not high-born. I've had to grovel before fools. I was a fool myself, failing at everything I turned my hand to. Corset maker, tax collector, cobbler. I found my calling with words, but only after I vowed to never again bend my knee before any man. If that's arrogance, so be it. I was taught differently. You are a woman, yes. Society has placed you in a different station. But we both have souls, and souls need a voice. Sarah's got a voice. You should hear her when she's cross at me. Sarah, Henri, I've been searching everywhere. This speaks better than I. You may find this revolution is for you as well. War with England? Mmm, my favorite! Apple peach pie! Dr. Franklin? I've just finished reading this troubling little pamphlet for the third time. It's written in simple language for ordinary people, but its simplicity is what gives it eloquence. Mr. Payne says the common people are capable of ruling themselves and don't need kings or even men of wealth and high station to rule over them. But men in your own Congress disagree. 
They say without guidance, without controls, the common man is impulsive, even violent. Mr. Payne seems better at tearing down than building up. That pamphlet is dangerous. Indeed it is. There's nothing like it in print. But sometimes dangerous ideas are necessary. The rabble can be violent, it's true. But so can kings. Mr. Payne has written something profound. Common sense is a revolution in thought. It appears to have taken an ordinary man to grasp the power of ordinary men. Well, to dinner. We just got home. Why are we out again when there's still half a pie on the table? I wanted to listen to the night. We have night at home. And did I mention the pie? Shh. It's not about rich men fighting other rich men for more. It's about us. But we don't need a king. We can rule ourselves with laws of our own making. Tis not against anyone. Tis a struggle for a new way of being. They're all reading common sense because it makes sense. I'll say I made three pounds. Don't tell me. You haven't read it? I read the cover. It's worth reading more. I thought you weren't going to read it. Well, I thought I should at least know what I'm arguing against. Look! Mr. Payne said he wanted opposing views. Well, he's got them now. Let's get his story. Mr. Mayweather? Yes, Father? You'll need to pick up the pace if we're going to get these up before dawn. And if we ever get our hands on the scoundrel who wrote this treason against reason, I'll tar and feather him myself. I've got to warn Tom. We've got to warn him. I thought you were against him. I... well, I... hurry up! Oh, my! Welcome to my palace. Tom, we've got to get you out of here. The Tories are looking for you. Quick, out the window. What are you doing? Aren't you going to make a run for it? If I ran every time someone disagreed with me, I'd have circled the Earth five times. I have nothing to run from. Let them do what they will with me. They'll never stop an idea. Not if it's a good idea. Hey, are you guys coming? Anybody? At ease. Gentlemen, last night I read a most remarkable little pamphlet. I have ordered copies printed to be distributed throughout the ranks. Study it. Learn it as you learned your Bible. And for those of you who cannot read, pay close attention to these words. For were the impulses of conscience clear, uniform, and irresistibly obeyed, man would need no other lawgiver. But that not being the case, he finds it necessary to surrender up a part of his property to furnish means for the protection of the rest. And this he is induced to do by the same prudence which in every other case advises him out of the two evils to choose the least. Wherefore, security being the true design and end of government, it unanswerably follows that whatever form thereof appears most likely to ensure it to us, with the least expense and greatest benefit, is preferable to all others. James, more paper. Coming right up, Moses. We must have printed a thousand copies, Moses. How many more do we need? Five thousand. Dr. Franklin says we need a copy for every man, woman, and child in the colonies. James, more paper! Keep printing, Moses. There's plenty more where this came from. I can't believe General Washington wants to see you. I can hardly believe it myself. You're an esteemed man, Tom. No, just a simple man with a simple idea. And the best-selling pamphlet in America! With all that money, maybe you can afford a better room. I'm donating every shilling to the American soldiers. They lack shoes, blankets, and powder for the muskets. The money will do the country more good than it will me. 
here. Give this to the soldiers, too. It's really your money anyway. Although I could spend it plenty good myself. <laughs> it has been a pleasure, Miss Phillips. It has been enlightening, Mr. Payne. Dearest Mother, out of chaos sometimes comes a new and better order. Perhaps it's as Mr. Payne says. We have it in our power to begin the world anew, to bring forward a government in which the rights of all men shall be preserved. O oh, ye that love mankind, ye that dares oppose not only the tyranny, but the tyrant, stand forth. America shall make a stand not for herself alone, but for the world. September 4th, 1776. Dear Mother, James Henri and I find ourselves in New York and the city is under siege. Lord Admiral Howe has arrived with nearly 30,000 troops and the wooden walls of his fleet have sealed off Manhattan Island. No help or supplies can reach the colonials from the sea. The rebels, licking their wounds from their devastating defeat on Long Island, are down to only 9,000 able men. Last night, a British officer boasted, Admiral Lord Howe's flagship, HMS Eagle, alone could sink what there is of the splinter fleet fur-built rebel navy. Ugh. Henri, when will you learn to close a door when entering a room? But I'd only have to open it again when we leave to meet James. A story? <laughs> James wants us to meet him at the fishing world as soon as you're ready. Coming? You're going to be thrilled! A sea monster? In New York Harbor? Sir, that is most unlikely. Maybe not thrilled. <laughs> Feisty girl, eh? But hear me, lass. I've fished these waters fair and foul more years than the three you've been alive. And never seen the likes of this. Last midnight, it was a mile north of the Whitehall Battery and less than a cable length away from my boat. Round it was, bright like a candle. I tried to give chase, but down it goes, a light under the water. And then, gone? Like a ghost at dawn. Hmm. I'd like to rent your skiff tonight. You're not thinking of stalking this seagoing phantom. Oh, James, it isn't real. Are you sure? Because I think I know what its next meal is. There's the Whitehall Battery. We roll a mile north. See anything? Yes. Trouble if we run into a patrol. Oh, the monster. Henri, no one believes in monsters. I remind you, this is the 18th century. Oh, but I have heard stories about, about giant beasts that eat whole ships in one bite. That's more than I can swallow. I think she made a joke. And a joke is what we are. Out here in the middle of. of. Look! It's the monster! Hey! What are you doing? Let's get after it! After it? Oh, we should be getting away from it! Monster Henri, the nature has become a coppersmith. 
What is it? I'll tell you later. The pump was sticking again. I couldn't surface fast enough. If you must, release the bomb. You'll pop right up and... What did you see? Nothing. Nothing at all. They were watching from the woods. I repeat, what did you see? We saw... that. And that is? I, I think it's some kind of underwater boat that you're going to attack the Redcoats with. If that were so, such an enterprise would require secrecy, which begs the question of what to do with you three spies. We are not spies. We're journalists. For Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. My word. No, my words. I wrote that. And I wrote the grammatically correct article below it. Benjamin Franklin helped convince General Washington that my turtle was an idea worth trying. I'm in his debt. You three may stay, but only if you give your word you'll withhold the story until after the attack. We agree. <gasps> now, Mr... Bushnell. David Bushnell, late of Saybrook, Connecticut. James Hiller, Sarah Phillips, and Henri Lefevre. Now, about this attack. Our infant navy can't beat the British on top of the sea, so I intend to strike from beneath. And the target? You won't be disappointed. Admiral Howe's flagship, the Eagle. 64 guns, the most powerful ship this side of the Atlantic. Sink her, and we break the blockade. Keep a lookout for the patrols. There's even more ships since last night. I count 300 hulls. Make for the battery. Something up ahead. Halt! By order of the Crown! They've got us! Remember, men, say nothing. They can't find out. What is that? I call it a rotating oar. It moves the vessel forward. And this one helps it go under. Mr. Bushnell, you have created what men have dreamt of. An underwater craft that is practical and safe. My little turtle is all that and more. You see, once under the eagle, Sergeant Lee will drill a small hole in the hull and attach this underwater bomb. But bombs can't explode underwater. This one can, and when it does, it will send a message to the HMS Eagle that we are a force to be reckoned with. But the soldiers will have no warning. Yes, we are living in strange times. But we are at war, Miss Phillips, and soldiers understand war. There's also pumps, ballast weights, rudder. No end of things to turn, pump, screw, and unscrew. I know there's a lot to learn, Sergeant. I wish we had more time for training. There's another problem, I fear. The Redcoats captured the towboat. They took the crew. I don't think they'll talk, at least not right away. The... It's all right, General Putnam. They work for Benjamin Franklin. Ah, yes, I've met the boy. A fine show at Bunker Hill in Boston, eh, lad? Yes, sir. This does leave us with a problem. It does indeed, General Putnam. Even if the men don't talk, Hal will know that some plan is afoot. We must strike soon. When can you attack? We need a calm sea and a weak ebb tide, say, the night after next. But we'll need another boat to tow the turtle into range. Maybe I can help. Let us do it. Three youths in the middle of that armada. It's dangerous. We've been in dangerous spots before, sir. We know how to avoid trouble. Three youths, one of them a girl? They would be ignored as harmless. Besides, I'd only be towing, not actually attacking. And if we're going to report this story, we have to be on the water. What do you have in mind, son? What happened? Sarah, could you please make a sketch of the turtle for the paper? Uh, I suppose so. Huh? Listen, we can't let Sarah know this. She'd object. We're supposed to be journalists, not soldiers. We're not supposed to be part of the action. You do not trust her? Sure I trust her, but she is British. I think we should tell her. Look, we'll fill her in later. But right now, just tell her we're... Observing the British fleet? 
But why at night? We're letting them get used to us, so they'll ignore us when the turtle goes on its mission. Here! What is going on with you two? Wait! There! <gasps> They've seen us! What should we do? Fish! Hey, two! I'm coming aboard! What are you doing out here? We are planning to attack and stick you with fish hooks. Hmm. What's this, then? They are notes for writing my mother and my adventures in the colonies. Your mother takes a keen interest in military affairs. There's nothing seditious about an intelligent woman wanting to keep well informed. That's for Black Dick to decide. Bosun, pass a tow line. Black Dick? That's what the sailors call Admiral Howe. Give us Black Dick and we fear nothing. But why do they call him Black Dick? Perhaps he has a dark temperament. We're going to find out. They're taking us aboard the Eagle. Compliments. You're to escort the prisoners to his day cabin. Very good, sir. This way. <gasps> oh. What's the matter, my lady? Don't like a bit of mold with your bread? <laughs> 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 As you can see, we plan to control the Hudson River Valley by holding Montreal on the north and New York to the south, cleaving the colonies in two, divide and conquer. A sound strategy, if this were Europe and all pleasant fields and farms, but it's nothing but dense, hostile wilderness. Nature will fight us as defiantly as the colonials. As a colleague observed, you cannot conquer a map. We must first negotiate. Negotiate? With these ignorant rebels? Hmm. I see you've never met Benjamin Franklin. He may be many things, including a rebel, but his worst enemy would not dare call him ignorant. Don't underestimate the Americans, Captain. They're carving a nation out of wilderness. They claim they were night fishing, sir, but I found this. She said their notes for writing her mother. I trust there's a good explanation for plying restricted waters in the middle of the night. Like we said, we were night fishing, sir. Indeed. Well, you've hooked some trouble, young man. Admiral Howe, we're journalists, and we're writing about your fleet. We work for Benjamin Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. Benjamin Franklin? Mother sent me to stay with him while she remained in London. Dr. Franklin very kindly taught us to be journalists. And how is my dear friend, Dr. Franklin? Is there anyone the boss doesn't know? He is very well, thank you. Sir, the rebels are planning something. Franklin or not, I don't trust them. My captain is a cautious man, and with excellent reason. I assure you, we are only observing. Just fishing for facts. Young lady, I want your word as a loyal subject of the Crown that you're taking no action against us. You have it. It's the truth. Uh. I suppose it is prudent to make friends with the press, sir. Indeed, Captain. Oh, I did not think we would ever get off that ship and complete our mission. Our mission, Henri? You mean gathering facts. What else? You mean, what else aren't you and James telling me? You two have been acting odd all night. What is going on? We're going to tow the turtle and be part of the attack. What? I wanted to tell you right away. Thanks, Henri. I guess you're upset? No, I'm not upset. I'm livid. I gave my word to Admiral Howe. You have made me a liar. I've never lied in my life. Never? How could you betray me like this? 
Sarah, it's not what you think. What am I supposed to think? That you've forsaken your duty as a journalist for personal glory? I knew you wouldn't understand. You understand. I will not aid in the death of British sailors. But we're only towing them. And that makes it right? How horrible. I'm ashamed of you. I'll have nothing to do with this. Am I your prisoner, Mr. Bushnell? Of course not, but I must insist on your being my... Guest? Only until after the attack. Please, Sarah. Maybe if you promise not to tell You've any... You've already made a liar out of me once, Mr. Hiller. That is enough for one night. Ugh. Dawn's in two hours. Time to go. Give me a minute. We're going now. I just wanted to say goodbye. Can't tell what might happen out there, you know? You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. It's wrong. I'm sorry you feel that way. I've got to go. Guess I won't need this tonight. Not unless you want a beacon to alert the British. It'll be dark, but the Foxfire Moss inside will provide light enough to read the depth gauge. Looks like you'll get your story firsthand tonight. Best of luck for all of us. Lobster bats on the water for this hour. I wonder if they know what's happening. We're here. Still wish I had more training. You'll do fine. I'm sure. A patrol, hurry, and good luck. passes slowly, doesn't it? It does indeed, Miss Phillips. Nearly done, sir. By heaven, I know where I'd rather be. Why aren't you? Why hastily train someone else to lead the attack? The turtle calls for limbs stouter than mine. I like the strength and endurance. My dear brother trained for months. He could make her thread a needle if he had to. What happened? He so wants to strike a blow for liberty, but he's down with a fever that ravages our troops. I'm sure Sergeant Lee will do his best. A little bit up. That's it. Steady now, steady. Come on, stop! <sighs> Pushed off! Current strong! Must fight it! Lee's air supply is going to run out. Where is he? The bomb should have exploded by now. Something's wrong. Please, get out of the boat. You said that something was wrong. I want to help my friends, but I can't do it alone. Air! Giving out! There! There he is! Oh, they've seen him! Bushnell? 
They're going to be captured. Shoot at the bomb. Blow it up. That'll send them running and loosen that dreaded blockade. Signal the fleet. Cut anchors and drift with the tide. But that will loosen our blockade, sir! Until we know what and how many we're up against, I won't risk the fleet. Recall the longboats! They're cutting the rankers! And their longboat is turning away! Your friends are safe, Miss Phillips. I just wanted to thank you for what you did out there, and also to say I'm sorry. I should have told you the truth. I was wrong not to. Yes, you were. And it hurt. I just didn't know which side you were really loyal to. Whichever one it may be. Nothing would change my loyalty to my friends. Thanks to you two, my turtle will live to fight another day. I'm afraid it'll be without us, sir. A wise lady has reminded me that good journalists record events. They don't make events. September 7, 1776. Dear Mother, Admiral Howe has moved his fleet to a more distant anchorage. I must admit, my admiration of these ingenious colonials. There is something about this new world that inspires new thoughts. Perhaps its untamed vastness fills the heart with dreams of endless possibilities. The more I am here, the more I believe in the future of this infant nation. Six, June, 1776. Dearest Mother, in the last Congress, some of the delegates believed Dr. Franklin and Mr. John Adams were plotting treason against the King. However, this Congress hasn't a single delegate still loyal to the Crown. James and Henri have journeyed to New York, where James hopes to interview General Washington for the Gazette. Provisions are every bit as low as morale, to answer your question bluntly. Provisions, morale, love. Ugh, not so hard. Oh, sorry. You're with the Pennsylvania Gazette, aren't you? We've met before in Philadelphia and Boston. Perhaps you can answer a question for me. What in the world is going on at the State House? From what I understand, long, drawn-out arguments. We need an official declaration to fix the people to our cause. The publication of common sense changed many men's minds in our favor, but it's time for Congress to act, to exploit public opinion. We need a complete united front. See for yourself, here. Who are they? Hessians. Yes, what? German soldiers. There's hundreds of them. And more on the way. King George III has made a deal with German princes to hire 18,000 troops. But General Washington, you'll be outnumbered. What will you do? do against the British and the Hessians, not without help from Congress. But what can Congress do? They can issue a proclamation of independence. Then the French government may be persuaded to send troops to help us face this onslaught. We've got to get back home to tell Dr. Franklin about this. Excuse me, but we need our horse right away. What's your hurry? We have to tell Dr. Franklin about the Hessians. You mean Ben Franklin? We have to tell Dr. Franklin so that Congress can get the French to help us. Henri? Well, in that case, I'll get right on it. Hey, 
Hey, let me go! Watch out, Henri, they're Tories! Get the boy. They want to warn Franklin about their new troops. <laughs> Never mind him. Let's lock this one in the barn. What is it, lad? James! He's been taken prisoner by the blacksmith and some men. Who is James? He's my friend. We have to go tell Dr. Franklin the Hessians are here so Congress can help. And these men want to stop us. Tories. They have him in there. <clears throat> Let's force it open. What are you doing? That's my stable. We're looking for a boy. Nothing in there but horses. What did you do to him? What is this little fellow yammering on about? You can't do that! You just did. That's private property. And that's a human being. James! And you're a Tory kidnapper. You can't do anything to me. I don't know what I can ever do to repay you. I do. Get your horse and ride like the wind to tell Dr. Franklin the news. We need some help from Congress. Dr. Franklin! Dr. Franklin! Dory's got James! The Hessians have arrived! They wouldn't let him out! Good heavens. They tried to stop us. General Washington said that there are 18,000 troops. They locked James up in a barn. Hessians locked you in a barn? Are you trying to worry us to death? Henri saved my life. You look a fright. That blacksmith was a Tory. He didn't want us to bring the news to Dr. Franklin. I shan't let you out of my sight for fear of the trouble you find. Start over, James. What did the Tories not want you to tell me? King George has sent 18,000 troops, the Hessians. We saw them arrive. General Washington wants Congress to- Yes, I know. A resolution on independence. We must try harder to get Congress moving or we'll be finding Hessians in our beds. The chair recognizes Richard Henry Lee of Virginia. Mr. President, I would offer three resolutions that the colonies are in fact free and independent states absolved of all allegiance to Great Britain, that the independent states seek to form foreign alliances, and that the independent states establish a plan of confederation. I second all three resolves. Order in the chambers. He's done it. Lee of Virginia. What a headline that's going to make. What an act of treason against the king. Treason? Your king has sent German troops to attack us. I want to hear too. Henri, be careful. Ah! <laughs> oh, no. Mr. Dickinson, I'm with the Pennsylvania Gazette. How nice for you. What are the hopes for passing the independence resolution? Few and far between. Independence is dangerous and impossible. Could you explain that answer, sir? Dangerous because without the protection of the crown, the frontier will fall to the Indians. And a European power more ruthless than England will gain ownership of the colonies. Impossible because only New England and the South want independence. The middle colonies, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania will never vote for it. But Thomas Paine's common sense has changed a lot of people's minds. Common sense is anything but. And just as Mr. John Dickinson tried to infer that Paine's common sense is a waste of time... I don't think infer is the word you want to use. Yes, it is. She's right. Well, it sounds good. Words have a great power, James. I know. I'm a journalist. You have to be more careful in choosing them. What would be the right word? Suggest? Doesn't sound as good. But it communicates your meaning. Even with the right word, this article's no good. I don't know whether Congress is going to adopt the resolution. 
Dr. Franklin is having a secret meeting upstairs about just that subject. So it is our job to come up with a written statement of independence on which Congress is to vote. So you'd better start working on it, John. Not me, Franklin. My shrill insistence and lack of tact have made me too obnoxious. If the others know it's my hand on the pen, they'll tear it to shreds. Whom do you propose to write it? You, Dr. Franklin. You are the most famous writer on the continent. I pass. I write for the amusement of my readers and myself. I will not write something only to have a Congress rewrite it. What about Roger Sherman or Robert Livingston? They're on the committee as well. They can barely write their names. Jefferson, you have a fine mind and a gift for language. Me? You. It will be an honor to turn what talents I have to this cause. I only hope I prove worthy. Ah! <gasps> Where's Mr. Jefferson going in such a hurry? He's got a lot of writing to do. <sighs> Drat! Have to do better than that. Go away! Just want to ask him some questions. He's too busy working. Working on what? I think I know a way to find out. How? Never mind. Just wait for me back at the print shop. Away. Chambermaid. Oh, all right. Let yourself in. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to destroy the... When in the course of human events it becomes imperative to cut asunder the... When in the course of human events it becomes desirable for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another... <gasps> it's sedition! He's writing an explanation for... Breaking off all ties to the crown. Finally, a declaration of independence. But why does he keep starting over? Why not just write it and have done? Remember what I said about the power of words? But doesn't he know that action is needed now? It is important to take the necessary time to choose the correct words. Especially when defying a king. And do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Yes! Yes! Order! The chair recognizes John Dickinson of Pennsylvania. James, look! Those men need help! We don't have time. We're already late for the reading of the Declaration. And this rain doesn't help. But they'll get soaked! So will we! Look, that one man has a collar. He's a man of God. We're stopping. All right. Need some help? Bless you, lad. What we need is transportation to the State House. Hop in. That's just where we're headed. Peace and prosperity would be the benefits of independence. Unlike my esteemed colleague, Mr. Dickinson, I have nothing but contempt for the present situation and nothing but hope for the... We've been detained by the elements. Order! Please explain this interruption. I'm the Reverend John Witherspoon, and we are the newly elected New Jersey delegation. We've been instructed by the New Jersey Provincial Convention to support the resolution for independence. This is a most welcome interruption. Are we late for the vote? Thank heavens, no. Thank the heavens, indeed. But thank these young people. Without their help, we might have missed it. 
I can't thank you enough. We are happy to have been of service. Can we stay and watch? Please, take the seats behind mine. But you must not tell anyone what is said here. All in favor? All opposed? That was only a straw vote to see where we stand. Well, only Delaware and Pennsylvania stand against the independence resolution. But in order to adopt it, the vote must be unanimous. The actual vote will take place tomorrow morning. Until then, we are dismissed. Rat! If only Caesar Rodney of Delaware were here, he'd vote with us and bring Delaware to our side. Caesar Rodney is bedridden. Wait a minute. James, could you and Moses race to Delaware to visit a sick friend? <laughs> if it's thieves, I'm alone. You'll only have me to rob. <laughs> We're not robbers. Ah, uh, then you've come to escort me to the next world. No, just Philadelphia. That's a far cry from heaven. Dr. Franklin sent us. With news of the independence resolution? The vote is tomorrow, and your vote is very important. Help me out of bed, gentlemen. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if you rode in the carriage with us? Speed is everything. <laughs> Thanks again, fellows. <laughs> that cough sounds bad. We'd better try to keep up with him. I don't understand why he wouldn't let us take it. Now you've seen a real hero. Steady, Rodney. <laughs> I've got to make it inside. <laughs> As I believe the voice of my constituents and of all sensible and honest men is in favor of independence, my own judgment concurs with them. I vote for independence. It's unanimous. The resolution on independence passes. He made it. You got the yes vote for Pennsylvania? Mr. Dickinson saw the inevitability of our cause and stayed home. At last, America is independent. Mark my words. This day, July 2nd, will be remembered as the most revered day in American history, an occasion for games, sports, bells, bonfires, and illumination. In accordance with the wishes of the delegates, let us now debate Mr. Jefferson's declaration. Debate what? The time for talk is past. It's time to act. The bonfires and illuminations may have to wait, John. Congress wants to quibble over the words. But you're cutting my document to pieces. I count 30 deletions and changes so far. More than a quarter of the length is gone. Your pride is understandable, Mr. Jefferson. You have written a magnificent document. But it's vital for us to be united as we take this drastic step. The chair recognizes Mr. Rutledge of South Carolina. Why do they have to cut the life out of the Declaration? It's fine as it is. It goes back to what I've said before, the power of words. 
They are choosing a set of words for which men will surely fight and die. Great care must be taken. There. A signature big enough for King George to see it all the way from London. Dr. Franklin? We must all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And there you have it, men, our Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. Independence! Freedom! Oh! Independence! It's amazing! That one document can have this effect on tired, dispirited soldiers. This is madness! Where will it end? In independence? If the purpose of the Declaration is to gain popular support for the cause of independence, it looks like it's working. This will make it easier for the United States of America to appeal to the French for military support. I have to admit it, Sarah. You and Mr. Jefferson have taught me a lesson I'll never forget about the power of words. Independence! Dearest Mother, where to begin? James Henri and I have been in New York City for a week now. General Washington, the commander of the American army, has been busy fortifying the city and harbor. And no wonder with the arrival of the British fleet. What a sight! Some say there are so many masts that it looks like a floating forest. You were so kind to ask Mrs. Radcliffe to give us lodgings. They are quite restful. Down with the king! I am sorry I cannot say the same for New York. Ever since the reading of the Independence Declaration on the 7th, it has been a city gone quite mad. Hey! I'm going to have them pull down the statue of King George III! Henri, stay here. You're nothing but a magnet for trouble. Anywhere you go, bad things happen. Do not. I think you'd better listen to James. You two are just jealous because I have more fun than you do. Down with George! Independence! Of what possible good is a broken statue? I heard they're taking it up to a cannonball factory in Connecticut. And why on earth would they go to all that trouble? General Washington told his staff that he intends to return the lead in the statue to the British troops as soon as possible. 
seems pretty boastful. General Washington's been Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army a whole year and has yet to fight a battle. I think he'll get his battle soon. A big one. General Howe, your telescope, sir. There. That's where we'll strike General Washington and his army. On the heights, we'll drive these pesky rebels into the river and have our troops home in time for Christmas. I thought you would be more comfortable eating here. Nowadays, the streets are so unsafe. This collar is unsafe. <gasps> I don't know where all those dreadful persons on the street have come from. I've never seen them in this neighborhood before. <sighs> Out-of-town troublemakers would be my guess. As Mr. Radcliffe used to say, this rebellion business will soon get out of hand. I'm sorry I won't get to see Mr. Radcliffe this trip. My mother used to enjoy his stories. You said he's in... Uh, uh, Canada? Yes. Seeing to some timberland we are thinking of buying along the St. Lawrence. Well, I'm just glad the British fleet has arrived. The sooner General Howe puts things right, the sooner we can all get this silly revolution business over with and get back to normal. Oh, boy. Why were you making those faces at Mrs. Radcliffe's? I couldn't stand it. Seeing to some timberland, we're thinking of buying along the St. Lawrence. Stop that. It's impolite. I saw a list of Tories at General Washington's headquarters. Mr. Radcliffe's name was on it. You don't mean the army is going after private citizens. No, but some other private citizens might. And I think Mr. Radcliffe and some of his friends thought it best to leave until things blow over. I don't think things will blow over very soon, if our Henri has anything to do with it. Sometimes I think Henri believes this is all just a big party for his benefit. Uh, Sarah, don't look now, but I think someone has his eye on you. Oh, don't be foolish. Awfully busy, isn't she? Yes, she thinks she's a journalist. Miss, allow me to introduce myself. I am Udney Wolf Hutchinson from Milford, Connecticut. My comrades in arms and I have arrived to defend this city and ladies such as yourself from the cruel, vindictive English. I am English myself, sir. Does that make me cruel and vindictive as well? Uh, I was only repeating terms some of our rougher members commonly use to refer to the enemy. Whether they are cruel and vindictive or gentlemen, they are soldiers. And I offer my strong arm for your protection. Forgive me. Duty calls. You've got to be kidding. Didn't he say his name was ugly? It was Adni, and you know it. Uh, phew. Where are you going? With you and the soldiers over to Brooklyn to watch the battle. Sarah. I'm a journalist, too. Remember, Concord? Your promise to Ben? Dr. Franklin, I won't put myself needlessly in danger. What is it with you and your need to imitate people? All right, let me put it this way. You can't go. You're not my mother. She's right. You're not her mother. Hmm. No, but I'm responsible to Dr. Franklin, and he's responsible to her mother. Besides, it's too big a story for both of us to be in one place. One of us needs to report on what happens in the city. Let's face it, you're more comfortable with tea and crumpets than me. I must admit, James, occasionally, you're right. 
General Washington sends reinforcements to the fort on the heights at Brooklyn to counter a large force of British troops heading for Long Island. All right, I'm going to Washington's headquarters. What about me? Can I go? No. no. We'll see about that. Sarah, who's that waving at you? Oh, it's that. Henri? General Putnam informs me that the British are moving up the Gowanus Road and Hessian troops have been spotted on the Flatbush Road. But there is still a substantial number in camp on the beach. I don't have to tell you what is at stake here, gentlemen. Everything worth living for. None of my boys will disappoint you, General. They'll throw the redcoats back onto their boats. General, if I may, this Jamaica Road concerns me. It's presently undefended. The enemy is here at the Gowana Swamp. And that is where I'll strike him. Sterling, I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. Yes, General Washington told me about you, Franklin's apprentice. Does it bother you that a good portion of the enemy is made up of Hessians? Well, son, the enemy is the enemy, whether they're British troops or German mercenaries hired to fight by the British. But to have no other reason to be here than to fight for money. No cause, no country, no freedom at stake. It doesn't seem right. I think you'll find they have as many reasons to be here as we do. Now, if you will excuse me... <laughs> Gentlemen, I have a special mission in mind. I need volunteers. Paid volunteers. I'm in! Sure! What's the mission? In the interest of fairness, I think the readers of Dr. Franklin's newspaper should understand the thoughts of those loyal to the king. That's a dangerous point of view to have these days. Well, nevertheless, I'm interested in what you think about the revolution. I'd keep your name out of it. I think it's a dangerous, foolhardy adventure. Why do they want to fight to create their own country? They feel England has mistreated them. I've read this Declaration of Independence. Is it worth going to war because the king called for their legislative bodies to meet in uncomfortable places? That's just one of their reasons. And the men who signed it? What do they know about running a country? These New Yorkers here. Francis Lewis, a hat seller. Lewis Morris? A farmer from up country. William Floyd? I've never even heard of him. This Philip Livingston is such an insufferable blowhard, Mr. Radcliffe had to ask him to leave a supper we were giving for the governor. Dr. Franklin signed it too. Yes, I know. Even the brightest of men do foolish things from time to time. My dear, you yourself are English born and bred. Our whole lives are tied to England. Our commerce, our culture, our laws, our religion, our education. Where do young Americans go to become doctors, lawyers, and clergymen? England. In what language are you writing your article? English. Exactly. Oh, my. It started. Oh, dear. May God protect us all. Looks like General Sullivan was right about the attack. It's way over there by Gowanus Swamp. Um, I was wondering, why did you take money from Lord Sterling? I thought Hessians were the only ones who fight for money. We fight for a cause. James, I believe in our cause as much as the next man. But I haven't been paid in a long time. 
Everyone needs a few coins. And goodness knows Lord Sterling has plenty to spare. Believe me, there's not enough money on Earth to make men face fire like that. But they're doing it, and my time will come. That's a rider. Coming fast, too. British regulars! They're right behind me! Lord Sterling was right. They're using Jamaica Road for an attack. Come on! Ugh. You say you're a spy? On the staff of General Washington himself? You're just a child. That is the beauty of it. Everyone thinks that and pays me no mind. What better disguise for a spy? General Washington, the entire right is falling back on Gowanus Road. On the left, General Sullivan has been flanked, and he cannot hold. Where? The Jamaica Road. Lord Sterling's troops held out as long as they could, but now they're pulling back to the heights. They're running? Why are they running? Because they can't fly. After today, I don't know if I'll ever sleep again. How do you think General Washington did? All's I know, General Washington goes a year without a battle, first one comes along, and the best we can do is run away. Nobody could stand up to what the British threw down that road. Well, we sure didn't. What now? I don't know. I just hope we don't have to surrender. General, the reports say the troops that survived the attacks are safely back onto the heights. How many didn't survive? We don't know yet. Lord Sterling was captured. Casualty estimates are high. There's more. What else? They captured General Sullivan, too. Hmm. General Howe is welcome to him. Boats. All the boats we can find. We are leaving the heights. In the morning, sir? Now. Listen, I am not even a colonist. I am European, like you. We think you are a spy, and until we think something else, you're not going anywhere. A spy? What an idea! I am just a kid! Is that everyone? Yes, General. We're the last. The rest of the troops have already escaped in the boats. <sighs> General, our retreat at night in the face of the enemy will be seen as the work of a military genius. I'm afraid this retreat is a very unmilitary thing to do. We were licked plain and simple. I wasn't ready for them. There's something you don't see every day. Are these reports correct, Captain? The Colonials abandoned the entire fort last night? Yes, General Washington sailed off under the cover of fog and darkness. It seems General Washington doesn't believe in the accepted conventions of war. You lose the battle, you surrender.
James, you're back. Pardon me. Are you all right? I'm fine, really. Well, what was the battle like? It was pretty bad. But General Washington safely snuck the whole army away during the night. Where's Henri? Isn't he here? We haven't seen him since you left yesterday. I thought he caught up with you. I wonder where he... Oh, no. Henri, where have you been? Nowhere. What have you done? Nothing. What kind of trouble did you cause this time? Me? Trouble? Do we really want to know? No. no. Where are you going? Since Washington's retreat from Long Island weeks ago, General Howe's done nothing, until today. That cannon fire has been going on all day. James said something was up at Kipps Bay, and I bet he's there already. Want to bet? Sarah! <gasps> Henri! We lost again! You were there? No, I found Ugly and he told me what happened. Is Udney all right? Yes, why? I thought you didn't like him. Well, I was just wondering, that's all. So what happened? Well, Udney told me... We was waiting at Kipps Bay, and the British opened fire. General Washington told us to stand our ground. But I guess it was too much for some of us. The officers couldn't stop them. Stand your ground! Return to the ramparts! Stand your ground, you... How am I to win a war with men like these? General! <laughs> you must come away! You can't win a war by retreating! Or can you? So that's Udney's story. It's not a proud day for our revolution. What's Washington going to do now? I'm puzzled, General. What kind of commander fights a battle and, after losing instead of surrendering, retreats to fight again? Evidently, this American General Washington. Another dispatch from James. Let it be good news for a change. It seems we still have quite a few troops, and General Washington has moved them all to a fort on Harlem Heights. This has turned into a new kind of war, an American war. General Washington is going to fight a delaying action, hoping to wear down the British while giving himself time to build and train an army. An army that fights with little or no pay. Few supplies, few weapons, but with a belief that they are Americans. And Americans will fight and die for freedom, nothing less. P.S. Some soldiers are putting up a flag on our new flagpole. There's not much wind today, so the flag is just hanging there. But it's still there. City is teeming with His Majesty's troops. The tension here is excruciating. It has been over a year since the rebellion began, and General Washington has been retreating from Manhattan as it burns behind him. Still, this beautiful autumn evening finds me full of hope. Congress has appointed a committee to meet with Admiral Howe, commander of His Majesty's Navy. Their subject, peace. This esteemed committee is composed of Mr. John Adams, Mr. Edward Rutledge of South Carolina, and, not surprisingly, our own Dr. Benjamin Franklin. My prayers, dear mother, are with them.
gentlemen, we shall be the instruments that will forge a great peace between ourselves and Britain. Much as a father might help to solve an argument between a mother and her adult child who has moved away from the family. We are on a fool's errand. Gentlemen, I am honored by your presence. I trust you will find the accommodations to your liking. It is my belief that Admiral Howe has not been given the power to offer us anything. It is also my belief that we must not offer him anything. Don't shut the window. We shall be suffocated. But the evening air! By cold, Doctor! The air within this chamber will soon be, and indeed is now, worse than that out of doors. Come, I'll convince you. I believe you're not acquainted with my theory of colds. I have read of your theory, but I've always thought it incorrect. Nay, my friend, air that is cold when one breathes it in becomes warm in the lungs. See, my breath is warm. Yes, I see. It will soon be widely recognized as a truism. Cold air, in fact, is a benefit to a man suffering from the common cold. And the proof is in the pudding. when Howe accepts our credentials, they'll be recognizing us as ambassadors from the United States, a nation separate from Britain. <laughs> Do you think General Washington has a chance to win back New York? No idea. But if I was 40 years younger, I'd sign up to help him. 30 even. 20. There's nothing exciting happening here. I know. <gasps> A worm! <gasps> hmm. I do wish Dr. Franklin had let us go with him to Staten Island. Oh. Uh, leave me alone! Take your hands off me! Look! Uh, 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 Why is no one helping the man? Don't do it, son! My wife! My children! I have to try. You do, and you'll end up on a British man of war like him! What do you mean, sir? Ain't ye heard of impressment? They're kidnapping him, forcing him to join the English Navy. <gasps> you lads will be next if you don't leave this place now. Now, oh, the squirt can probably stay. I doubt they'll be wanting him. Ah. I'm staying. There's an important story here. Young'uns. What? Won't it be hard to make deadline filing your story from a British ship? My friends, I'm afraid I must side with the lady on this issue. Oh, you must? Who are you? Oui, who are you? I'm a school teacher. My name's Nathan Hale. Over there! <gasps> That was quick thinking. What's your name? Henri Lefebvre, Patriot. Always a pleasure to meet a fellow Patriot. I am Miss Sarah Phillips. I am honored, Miss Phillips. Oh, brother. Mr. Hale, it is a pleasure to meet a man of such high breeding. A rare pleasure. So, Nathan, what's a highly bred school teacher doing wandering around the docks in wartime? One never knows where one might find a job. What do you teach, Mr. Hale? Why, I teach... I cannot lie to a lady such as yourself, Miss Phillips. I am in the employ of General George Washington. I knew it was something like that. 
You will, of course, repeat that to no one, as my mission is quite secret. He's a spy! You're a spy! I must embrace you! <laughs> I'm a journalist, Nathan. What's your mission? I won't publish till you complete it. I'm sorry. I've told you too much already. I must go. I must say I am shocked that a man of your station would take on such a vile duty as spying. It is a role most unworthy of a gentleman. I know many believe that, Miss Phillips. But every kind of service necessary to the cause of freedom becomes honorable by being necessary. You are, I assume, aware of the penalty for spying? Should you be caught? I am. It is death by hanging. A shameful death, surely. Painful, too. Nevertheless, for a year I have been attached to the army and have not rendered any material service. This shall be my service. Good day, and God be with you all. Wherever this Nathan Hale goes, I go. I regret, gentlemen, that I am unable to accept your credentials. That would mean the king agrees that his colonies are an independent what? nation. John? However, His Majesty has generously permitted me to offer a full pardon to any and all colonists who swear allegiance to Britain. Admiral Howe, as of two months ago, we are the United States of America. There will be no turning back from that. No turning back. Gentlemen, I've come to love this land. I feel for America as for a brother, and if America should fall, I would lament its loss like that of a brother. We will do our best to save your lordship from that pain. So far, so good. He has no idea we're watching him. Finally, he's going to do some spying. That British ship is sending men to meet him. Perhaps it has something to do with his horrid burning of New York City. Or maybe he's pretending to be a British agent. Nathan is a double agent. Maybe he's a better spy than I thought. Hello, Patriots! Oh, no. He couldn't see the warship. He must have thought they were Americans. Run, Nathan! Run for the woods! James, no! Remember what might happen if the British Navy catches you? Nathan! James, you shouldn't be here. Are these? General Al, sir, we captured them at Flushing Bay. We found these, hidden in the soles of this one's shoes. That one's in a foreign language, sir. I am grateful for your help, Sailor. Yes, sir. It is, in fact, in Latin, and contains information about the placement of His Majesty's troops. Useless information, 10 days old, which does nothing to alter the fact that you, sir, are a spy. What is your name? Sir, I am Captain Nathan Hale of the Continental Army of the United States of America. What is your mission? Sir, 
I was sent by General George Washington to gain whatever intelligence I could concerning the position and strength of our opponent's forces in New York. Well, Captain Hayden, you have failed in your mission, utterly. I have, sir, but there are better men who will succeed. Forgive me, General, but one day soon you will have to take your leave of this fine mansion on the bay. And you? Are you a spy too? No, sir. We found this on him, General. A journalist for Dr. Franklin. Go, return to our friend. Excuse me, General, but I want to stay here to report this man's story. Leave now, young man, while you still can. I think the American public ought to know how King George deals with spies. You don't have anything to hide, do you, General? Hmm. We give you our permission to write your story. We will now pass sentence on this spy. Oh, Sarah, what are we going to do? Find James. Who knows what they plan for him? A horseman! It might be a red coat or a thief. Come on! No. Come, hide! We must take the chance. We have no choice. Sir, rider! Captain Nathan Hale, for the crime of spying against His Majesty King George III, I sentence you to be hanged this very morning. Captain Hale? Yes, sir? Rise and follow me. down after three or four years at sea. Bless you, sir. The United States thanks you. Leave me alone. Let me go. Let him go, please. And why should we let this little rebel go? Because they are going to be married. Yes, he is my fiancé. What's a high-class miss like you doing with a scruffy yank like him? He's actually quite gracious and cultured when you get to know him. Him? Certainly. And my James does plan to join His Majesty's Navy. He does? But he must wait until we're married. It's very hush-hush, with all the tension in the city. Can you imagine what the rebels would do to him if they knew he was to marry an English girl and join the British Navy? James loves our king so much. He's dying to join up, but he knows he must wait. Just a little longer, dearest. Hold on just a little bit longer. She telling the truth? Yes, she's my fiance. We are very much in love. Please, sir, don't take my love away from me. Not now. Not after all we've been through. Please. <laughs> Go on, then. Far be it from me to intrude on the course of true love. Good luck, miss. You too, laddie. <clears throat> See at sea! Thank you, sirs. Thank you ever so much. Oh, young love. 
I'm waiting for a thank you from you. I think I'm gonna be sick first. Hmm. Please release my hand. That's the easiest thing anyone's ever asked me to do. So, when is the big day? Listen, I have bad news. As you duly warn, I fear I am of too frank and open a temper to act successfully the part of spy. I hope you can forgive me for trying. And as for the method of my death, take courage and be not ashamed. I die proud, I die free, I die an American. Your loving brother, Nathan. Give me that. The rebels should never know they had a man in their army who could die with so much firmness. Are there other letters? Sir, I request to see a clergyman, please. Request denied. Sir, I request a Bible, please. Request denied. In the name of... Quiet! Guards! Does the prisoner have any last words? I do, sir. Speak them now. It is the duty of any good soldier to obey any order from his commander-in-chief. I have obeyed an order and I am here. I am ready. To my foe, you soldiers of Britain, my brothers, I say may you be as ready as I to meet your end in whatever shape it might appear. To my countrymen, old and young, I say, let us never lay down our arms until we obtain our independence. If I had 10,000 lives, I would lay them all down if called to it in defense of our glorious new nation, in defense of freedom. Freedom! I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. When I think of how Nathan... the way he... Hal wants me to write this story. He knows Nathan's hanging will lower American spirits. I'm not going to play his game. The General does not know Nathan, does not know America, and most certainly does not know you. Let us remember Nathan's spirit, his dignity, and his courage. And let us tell others of the same. His words, Nathan's words, will be a weapon in defense of his cause, our cause, freedom. But only if you write them, James. And we will need weapons now that we know the British have no interest in making peace. James, you must write this story. I'll make him write it. I shall help you. Nathan Hale did not die in vain. Surely it is our responsibility to search out the seeds of victory and defeat, in failure, and even in death. Dr. Franklin, will you do me a favor? What's that, my boy? Make sure my friend General Howe gets the first copy of this. That I will, James. That I will. Look at this! 
jams and jams and more jams. And rock candy. Moses and I will starve while you're in France. <laughs> Those sweets are to ease the discomfort of a long voyage. If you try to ship out with our peach jam, you'll have to get past me first. Congress won't be happy if you delay their most important statesman. They would understand if they knew how good this jam tastes. You're probably right. But they have asked Dr. Franklin to try to enlist France in the American cause. Right now, we Americans stand alone in the world. We must acquire allies, or the revolution is doomed. Promise me he'll bring back some French pastries. I'm worried about him. After his last voyage, he swore he'd never cross the Atlantic again. Seventy is very, very old. At his age and in his health, who knows if he'll survive the trip? There! from? Sarah and James, would you like to read it, Henri? I couldn't possibly read through the tears in my eyes. Tears from seeing all this food for the last time. I hope it's good news. If I'm to convince France to help us, we have to show that we can gain a victory against the British on our own. Hmm. What's wrong? Washington is retreating from Manhattan. Dear Mother, please forgive the irritable nature of my letter, but I'm tired and thirsty. Oh, oh. And the men in these colonies suffer from a decided lack of gallantry. In addition, since I'm not a man, General Washington told me I couldn't stay at the front lines. He sent me to a place called Fort Triumph. Here! It can't be much of a fort, as I'm about to join a group of camp followers, women and children who live here with their soldiers. <laughs> I'd certainly rather be viewing the action with the General and James than be here watching people wash clothes. Thank you, sir. <laughs> nice little stroll, huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm Margaret Corbin. My friends call me Molly. Who are you? Thank you. I'm Sarah Phillips. It's good. Of course it is. The dirt from the river adds flavor. Oh. <laughs> I've been General Washington's secretary for months now, and I've never seen him so discouraged. All we need is a victory, and I know the general will deliver it. He's the most decisive, commanding man I've ever met. Lieutenant Harrison, I need you now. Commanding is right. English is not even my language. This year I talk funny, and I can't learn to read. Who says this? Other boys. Let me tell you something, Henri. It's a credo I live by. Be what you want to be, not what people tell you you can be. Well, then stop telling me I can be a reader. What I want to be is left alone. You owe it to yourself to hone your reading, writing, and arithmetic. I'm doing just fine without it. Yes, you've done well so far. You've learned a trade and a second language, and I'd like to help you keep learning. Why? For one thing, if you could improve your skills at estimation, we might not be short logs for the fire, and we wouldn't both be freezing our toes off. At least we're not outside. Do you think Sarah and James are all right out in the wilderness? Rosemary, stop wiping your nose on my dress. <laughs> Ouch! This is ridiculous! 
ridiculous. I'm out in the middle of Fort Nowhere fishing for trousers. You're not the only one who didn't want to come here. Oh, <laughs> hello, Molly. After my husband John enlisted, he was about to leave our place in Pennsylvania. Know what it's like to be a woman living alone in the wilderness? I'm sure I don't. In that wild country, I wouldn't even have been able to feed myself. Hey, Maul. What's for supper? Some kind of shirt soup? Better than raw squirrel or whatever it is you got stuck in your beard. <laughs> ah, you leg puller. Raw squirrel. It's probably raccoon. It's amazing the way you keep your optimism in a place like this. Dearie, when I was five, my daddy was killed and my mama kidnapped. I never saw her again. If that didn't ruin my life, I'm sure not gonna let this do it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your friend, Ma? Sarah. She's English. Well, we won't hold that against her. This is John. He's a matras. Cleans and loads the cannons. I'm mighty proud of him. One reason I don't mind working so hard. We can't have the man loading the cannon wear dirty drawers, can we? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cannons are they? Pennsylvania six-pounders, right up there on the brow of that hill. We protect the northern approach to Fort Washington. And those beauties will make things plenty tough on the lobster backs. I beg your pardon for the slight, Sarah. Never mind. I quite understand. Ignore him. John just doesn't like red. Sure am lucky he married me. Don't let her fool you, Sarah. I'm lucky she married me. It's not like I had lots of choices. It was either him or Squirrel Beard over there. It's Raccoon! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Franklin, the only thing you'll catch with a line that thick is influenza. I think I've already got that. Actually, at the other end of the line is a thermometer to measure the water temperature. Now save you the trouble. It's cold. I study the ocean currents and temperatures every time I cross the Atlantic. It was these studies that helped me chart the Gulf Stream seven years ago. Just don't let your studies interfere with your health. It's my job to get you to France alive. How are you feeling? I'm not sleeping well in these rough seas, and the food, particularly the salt beef, is tough on 70-year-old teeth. But the fresh air seems to do me some good. However, I'd prefer to avoid the frequent baths. Gentlemen, I have surprising news. The British have begun moving back to Manhattan. I suspect they're mobilizing to attack Fort Washington. Our last stronghold in Manhattan. It houses some of our finest troops and a large amount of our armaments and ammunition. This fort and its outposts are critically important to the war for both sides. Sarah's at one of those outposts. Yes, your friend who wanted to see action is about to get her wish. the best artillery mate in the whole regiment. I can't believe you're permitted to do such a thing. I don't ask permission to do nothing. I believe in being what you want to be, not what people tell you to be. I know someone else who shares your point of view. I can't read the recipe. I'm starved to death. <gasps> Who is there? Henri? Moses, is that you? What's wrong, lad? 
Nothing's wrong. Come on, son, tell me. When you didn't come back, I tried to make dinner from the notes you left me, but I couldn't measure. Oh, you're teasing me now. And there's lots of words I don't understand. Hey, you're the one who's teasing me. Oh, you were late on purpose. You knew I wouldn't be able to make myself food. I could have starved. Somehow, I think you wouldn't have starved. But reading and measuring are important things to know. Have you changed your mind about learning them? Yes. Even if other fellows don't think I can. But not right away. Why not? Because I'm too hungry! First a late supper, then a late lesson. <laughs> absolutely must evacuate Fort Washington. The armaments at the fort are critical to our cause. America has no munitions factories. We've no way to replace the guns and ammunition if they're captured. General Washington, I strongly disagree with Colonel Reed. I'm confident we can hold the fort. If we can hold it, we should hold it. Sir, General Green would risk over 2,000 of our finest troops. We've already lost too many to disease and desertion. I don't have the stomach to lose any more. We're in a war, Joe. We're bound to lose men if you haven't the stomach for it. Get another job. I stand by my recommendation to hold the fort. General Green's right. We must fight. Um, excuse me. Sirs. Sir, this hesitation to evacuate is nothing short of reckless. Forgive me, but you must make up your mind. It's only November. How much colder does it get here? Much. That's why when John's tour of duty is up, we're moving south. Then we'll start a family. Oh, how many children do you want? Mm, I don't know, eight, ten. Oh my. John's a good man. He'll make a fine father. Probably a tired one too. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my family terribly, but being around people like you makes my stay here so much easier. Here now, I'll make it easier still. I like to press the summer flowers. They always add a bit of cheer when winter comes knocking. It still has its perfume. General Washington, sir, we need a decision now. Do we abandon Fort Washington or do we defend it? General Green, as you are the officer most familiar with the situation, I leave it to you to give such orders as to defending Mount Washington as you judge best. I appreciate your confidence in me, sir. So, General Howe demands that I surrender this fort over to you British. Please repeat the following to your commander. Give me leave to assure His Excellency that, inspired by the most glorious cause that mankind ever fought in, I am determined to defend this post to the last man. Expect nothing else from a soldier of Colonel McGaw's reputation. That will be all. Gentlemen, I am resolved to crush the rebels into dust. Even a single victory could give their so called revolution momentum on the battlefield as well as support from foreign shores, especially France. Look at all the redcoats. They're preparing for an attack. And we won't have long to wait, either. See there? Hessian troops to the north. Hessian mercenaries. I can't believe the king is paying Germans to come here and kill British colonists.
Washington's not going to evacuate the fort after all, is he? He's worried that it may not be as strong as we think. He wants to inspect it in person. Why does he keep changing his mind? The British have begun their attack! Like it or not, we have lost our opportunity to evacuate the fort. With this six-pounder, we might be able to hold off the Hessians. But not the King's Navy! You won't have the Corvins to blame! has fallen. There's nothing we can do for those poor souls. Please let Sarah be all right. General! They're raising the Union Jack over Fort Washington! That's it, then. General Howe has prevailed. This is a most unfortunate affair and has given me great mortification as we have lost not only 2,000 men, but a good deal of artillery and some of the best arms we had. Sir, the men panicked. I did not account for the possibility if we had but held the perimeter. No, sir, we should have abandoned the fort as General Lee and I urged. Gentlemen, please. I alone am to blame. I've never seen him look so disappointed, so helpless. He is in danger of becoming a parody of a general. I pray Colonel Reed is wrong. What happened to Fort Tryon? To Sarah? Women and children will be returned to us. This may be war, James, but there are rules. What's that? I think it's... Yes, it is! The camp followers from Fort Tryon! Continue the fight after this. It's hopeless. Nothing's hopeless. Not when people like Molly fight on when all seems lost. If all the colonists display her spirit, America will be very difficult to defeat. Will your friend be all right? Yes. You can't keep the Corbins down. 
I learned an important lesson today, Mr. Harrison. As much as I respect my generals and consider them my family, never again will I make a decision that goes against my own instincts. A disaster like this battle must never happen again. We must prevail in our fight for freedom. We will prevail in our fight for freedom. Maybe with the spirit of George Washington. And Captain Molly, and Ben Franklin, and so many others. All isn't lost after all. <laughs>